for the Splash Live, Greater West Bloomfield's dedicated update show. Events, businesses, and people. Anything and anyone causing a ripple in the community. And now, let's dive in to the Splash Live. Good morning and welcome to the Splash Live. Dave Scott here in our Splash Studios, thank you for joining us all across West Bloomfield and the greater West Bloomfield area. And, and actually, wherever you happen to be in the world, we look at our website numbers and, and we have more people watching from all over the world uh, each and every day. So good to have you with us, whether you're streaming, watching us on TV, listening to us on the radio. Good to have you here for the Splash Live. We've got a great show lined up for you. Um, the Splash Live is part of 90 minutes of live local television each and every day. We start with the Splash Live at 9.30. Tyler Keefe will be in at 10 o'clock this morning with the Megacast. It all covers our greater West Bloomfield area and the general southeastern Michigan, Oakland County, and uh, Michigan, state of Michigan geography um, throughout this period of time, all with a very local flair. We hope you enjoy what we're putting together for you each and every day. Super easy to watch. You can turn on cable television if you live in the West Bloomfield area and tune into computers. We're on AT&T cable as well on channel 99. We system with all the community channels around Detroit at civiccentertv.com. You might like to go there because it's in full definition. We have our new program schedule, all of the content, and a lot of other helpful and all of our programs. Programming, CivicCenterTV.com. We're on social media each and every day live. That includes Facebook and on YouTube. Just search for Civic Center TV. And then uh, during this time, a couple of radio stations also on the air with us right now in 89.3 broadcast station in the greater West Bloomfield area. And then we always um, give a big nod and thanks to the people at the BIF. 88.1 at Bloomfield Hills High School, who picks up a portion of the show each and every day as well. So there's all the stuff going on that you need to know about our show. Let's take a look at the weather in the greater West Bloomfield area. A little drizzly this morning. And again, I don't think we can get enough rain to make up for the couple of weeks of uh, just nonstop sunshine. So we'll put up with it today. 67 degrees, had a few showers, improving tomorrow up to 74 with sunshine, and Thursday looks great. Per some clouds, some sun should be really nice here in West Bloomfield. Busy calendar here in our area. Of course, tomorrow, the 14th annual Greater West Bloomfield Health and Wellness Fair will be going on at the West Bloomfield Township Hall. Starts at 11 o'clock in the morning, continues on until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We will be there. Yours truly there broadcasting live tomorrow at 12 noon. We'll talk to a lot of the people that are there. Suzanne Levine, of course, and the Greater West Bloomfield Chamber will be there and a lot of medical professionals speaking of Suzanne. She'll be checking in with us live later on in the show this morning. We get all the final details and uh, toss out a big warm welcome and invitation to you to hopefully join us tomorrow at the West Bloomfield Township Hall for the big 14th annual health and wellness fair. I'm, I've been on a diet. I'm hoping to get good numbers <laughs> out of the docks when we go there and they got all the testing and everything going on. West Bloomfield High School commencement. What a fantastic event we had on Sunday out at the Pine Knob Music Theater. So good to be out there. It's quite a production and quite an ordeal, but we've got picture after picture after picture here of our students um, having a great time at Pine Knob, a lot of the different organizations all taking photographs, pictures of the stage, pictures of the event. It was an absolutely fantastic event. And if, uh, if you did not see the commencement and you want to see, maybe you're one of the students and you were there in attendance and would like to go back and see yourself trotting across the stage as you get your diploma. I mean, I wish we had that back in 1977 when I graduated West Bloomfield High School and I could go back and see that video. But you've got it. You've got video of, of you, all these great pictures, uh, the, the band performing, and so much more. It's all on civiccentertv.com. We invite you to tune in. You can see when and the program will be airing on our channel by taking a look at our program schedule. And uh, like every other program, after it airs live, you can always go back into our on-demand area. So 
We again salute the amazing graduates of West Bloomfield High School as they venture off into the rest of their life and uh, invite you mom, dad, brothers, sisters, grandparents, whoever, to take an opportunity and watch the program right here on Civic Center TV. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have an unbelievable story about two people in our community. No one asked them to do what they did. No one pushed them to do what they did. No one's obligated. They weren't obligated to do what they did. But Two of our citizens in West Bloomfield made an amazing difference yesterday. And we'll tell you more about that in just a couple of minutes. Good morning. I'm Dave Scott. You're watching The Splash Live, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back with The Splash Live. Like what you see? Beautiful works of art, masterworks of metal, and accomplishments of artistry will be on display near you. All kinds of artists from all walks of life come together to celebrate their skill and appreciate their work's beauty. Hot Works presents the 2023 Orchard Lake Fine Art Show. Stop by July 29th and 30th between 2 and 10 p.m. between Powers and Daly off of Orchard Lake Road. What's happening around you? Hear about state events, businesses, and from the people behind them on The Megacast, an hour-long TV, radio, and streaming show keeping you informed on the day-to-day -day news. Listen in on talks with volunteer groups, documentarians, and financial advisors Monday to Friday with your host, Tyler Keeft. Catch The Megacast weekdays from 10 a.m. to 11 on Civic Center TV, 89.3 Lakes FM, and streaming on MyMyTV.com. And now, back to The Splash Live. Good morning. Welcome back to The Splash Live. Dave Scott, Civic Center TV. Tyler Keith coming in this morning. A little bit later on, he will be checking in with us uh, with the Megacast. Right now, though, I want to tell you an interesting story about a couple of people in West Bloomfield who made a difference. And it all started back in 1972 when an organization at that time called the Walnut Lake Women's Club built a peace memorial in the community. It was built then at the Walnut Lake Elementary school, which was subsequently closed in the 1990s. And, uh, and this memorial was built, um, but unfortunately it hasn't really been maintained that well. It isn't on, you know, community property. The school is no longer there. Here's a picture right here of what the memorial looked like way back when, when there was a ceremony, the old peace memorial. And, uh, and then if you take a look at this picture right now, the first picture is a picture here of, of the condition that this memorial uh, was in here. Let's take a look at that. There you go. So there is the Walnut Lake Peace Memorial. And you can see it's overgrown. You can't really see anything. And uh, that's the before picture. Let's take a look at the after picture right now. There you go. So you can see that's what it, what it should be like. And uh, the reason that happened is because of a couple of great guys, Bert Green and Steve Kay, here in our community decided to do something about it. What I really like is they actually put a video up too uh, of getting this all done. So let's see if we can roll this video, Jared, that, that the self-published video that they put up on Facebook. For the first time in about 30 years, Walnut Lake will see the U.S. flag raised over the Veterans Memorial today, June 11th, 2023. Myself and Burt Green raising it up. And there we have it, folks, for all the veterans that have served our country, for our freedom. We appreciate you. And we did this for you today. Thank you and God bless. All right, the shots taken and the narration from Steve Kay. Joining us is a partner in crime on this project, uh, Bert Green. Bert, good morning. Welcome to the Splash Live. 
Good morning, Dave. It's great to be here and uh, excited to be on your show today. Well, thank you very much. And first of all, I salute you. Thank you very much for honoring um, our veterans and honoring the spirit of this peace memorial by bringing it back. Uh, tell us a story from your perspective. I kind of told the, the, the audience and the viewers what we knew about it, but um, tell us a story. Sure. So I'd be happy to. And I want to clarify, I did not serve in the military, although my dad was in the Navy in World War II. He's long since passed. But uh, the United States military and armed forces have always been near and dear to my heart. So as you mentioned, at the old site of the former Walnut Lake School, uh, there was a memorial that most people didn't even know it was there. Um, thousands of people drive down Walnut Lake and Ingstern Middle Belt Roads, and, and you probably wouldn't have noticed it, even though it's fairly close to the road. Um, and then my friend Steve and I um, were walking by one day and said, hey, what is that? And we realized that there was a memorial back there. So we texted each other on Saturday night and said, what are you doing tomorrow morning? And we didn't have any plans. So we drove out there with uh, some of our lawn and garden equipment and you know, with some shears and some clippers and a weed whacker and other things. And we decided to uh, clean up the site and uncovered a little bit of the story of this memorial that was put up in 1972 and long since neglected. Um, I can share more details uh, at the end about a little miracle that happened, uh, but it was just a matter of uh, uh, weeding, pulling some trees, cutting some things down. We repaired the fence with some spray, spray paint, um, did a little tuck pointing, uh, put up a couple of different American flags, and uh, sort of un rediscovered or unearthed this sort of forgotten memorial and, and community treasure that is worth your time to drive by the next time you're on uh, Walnut Lake Road by the hardware store across from that veterinarian. Sure, it's Walnut Lake Road, and I think you described the location real well. The, the school is still there. It's closed. It's been used for a variety of different purposes over the years, and that site is about to go through a major update and become a new Chaldean Community Center. And, uh, and, and what is going to happen with this memorial and how they're going to integrate it into the community, I'm sure, will be the subject of some conversations in the coming days. But, so, but you guys, just you saw this. And you just went and did it. I, I'm not trying to get anybody in trouble, but you didn't really yeah. like get any permissions. You just um, you figured it's a memorial. It deserves to get cleaned up. I, I think the good philosophy is it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> um, it did turn out we were trespassing. And I want you to know that this morning I reached out by email to the Chaldean Cultural Society. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope we can come to some sort of agreement. I think originally they did not want to keep the memorial and maybe wanted to knock it down. But it's in the far west corner of their property, nowhere near any buildings. And I don't see any reason that they would really want to to knock it down. And myself and Steve have agreed to sort of maintain it in perpetuity. It doesn't really require that much effort. But yeah, we just decided to to not ask anyone. And 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 sometimes when you ask for permission, you get paperwork involved or the lawyers or the police involved. And on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock, it took us an hour and a half, and we just did some blood, sweat, and tears to get it going, and it was it was nice. It felt good inside to do something for those folks that did serve our country, and it's nice to know that West Bloomfield cares about this. Um, I've also reached out to the Greater West Bloomfield Historical Society. They're interested in picking up some of this story as well and, and trying to keep this in their anarchy. And what's interesting, Dave, is nobody really knows about this memorial. As you mentioned, it's not on township property. It's not deeded. It's not an easement. West Bloomfield didn't know much about it. The Historical Society didn't know much about it. And it really was a forgotten site that could become a little gem. And I hope if we're allowed to keep it there on Memorial's Day or Veterans Day, uh, folks can gather there and pay their respects to our military. Um, I was thinking about putting some flowers out there and uh, just sort of uh, liven up that little corner of what is otherwise a little bit of a desolate spot. Well, and no question about it. And, and the people in the Chaldean community and the folks who are running the Chaldean Community Center are building that new facility. This is, I'm sure, a surprise to them as well. And we're going to give them our 100% support regardless of what they decide to do about this. I'm sure there'll be a way that if it's not part of their plan to have that on that property, that we can figure out something good to do with it. And they certainly shouldn't be, you know, leveraged to specifically do something. Now, if they can make it work, wouldn't that be great? But if they can't, I, I certainly would understand. And my guess is you guys would as well. And we'll figure something out, right? 
I, I would think so. Again, I spoke to some township people. This has really picked up some steam, and I do want to leave a couple of minutes for the miracle that happened. With uh, the we'll get there. The we'll get there. But, uh, but yeah, but um, West Bloomfield Township has the support. Um, there's no electricity or plumbing, so there's nothing. There's no sort of bills or anything that need to be maintained. Um, if we do get the go-ahead, I do want to put a solar operated light that would point up at the stars and stripes so that it would be properly lit according to the United States Code of Flags. But, sure. um, but yeah, I, I would think that this would be a win-win for the Chaldean Cultural Community Center. It would be a win-win for the township. It'd be a win for our veterans and our families that serve our community. Um, it'd be a nice little place where people could perhaps, you know, pay their respects or, or take a walk or bring their animals by. So I would think that it's not very complicated. There's no financial. I paid 20 bucks for a can of spray paint and a, an American flag. I, I don't think there's any cost involved. <laughs> My hope is that we can keep it keep it in perpetuity for our community and our revenue. Well, I think, I think it's a great idea. And again, I, I applaud you. I hope you don't get like a summons or anything <laughs> for trespassing on property, but I know you guys took the risk and uh, just did what you felt was the right thing. And considering how long it had been ignored, I get I get it. Um, I want to get to your miracle. By the way, that's a good tease. Uh, we like that in television because people will just stay tuned. They're waiting <laughs> for the big miracle story. Before we get that, hopefully not to step on it because I have no idea what it is. Um, Talk a little bit about what you know about the organization that built this in the first place, the Walnut Lake Women's Club, and that they're on that uh, memorial with their insignia and their signature um, in the year 1972. What do you know about them and the uh, the origination of this uh, memorial? So, um, you know, we don't know much. Um, we are certain that the Walnut Lake Women's Club is defunct, as in it's no longer an operating organization. It's probably 50, 60 years ago, it was affiliated with the school and nearby Walnut Lake. And I would assume it was an organization of women that did civic projects mm -hmm. and helped our community. Um, there was an original memorial, you showed the picture in the 1800s and the early 1900s. And then when they redid the school, they built this memorial. and. As far as we can tell from the Historical Society, it served two purposes. It was a peace memorial. So at the time, the Vietnam War was going on, and I think there was a lot of conflict within America about the purpose of that war, and they wanted to sort of establish a peace sort of background. Sure. And then in a little writing that I found online, it said, the memorial is dedicated to anyone that has served in any capacity to support our United States military and armed forces. Um, I'm wearing the hat of something called Folds of Honor. Um, I play the trumpet or the bugle, and for many years I've been involved in playing taps, uh, both on Memorial Day as part of something called Taps Across America. But I also play taps at the funerals for our fallen service members and their families. I get a request and I drive around Southeast Michigan and Ohio, and I play taps, uh, which I also did at that memorial as well. And there's just a lot of things civilians can do to support our military. Um, so getting back to your original question, don't know much about this Walnut Lake Women's Club. If any of your viewers know of anyone that was in the organization 50 or 60 years ago, or if they still have meetings, we'd love to get them out to the site to see the refurbished memorial that they did the hard work on. And uh, there's a beautiful poem written on there that talks about the eternal spring uh, that's provided when someone gives up their life for our country. Albert, uh, no question about a good work, and I'm sure with uh, Gina Gregory of the Historical Society right. on the job now, we'll get to the bottom of all that history. She's amazing. Okay, so there is a miracle associated with this whole story, and uh, we're all interested in hearing about it. Yeah, and uh, I just want you to know I'm not a particularly superstitious person. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Jewish by faith, but we all believe in good deeds and miracles, and as they say, sort of God works in mysterious ways. So at this memorial, there's a flagpole behind it, um, about 30 feet tall, and there was a rope attached. And my friend and I, there's an Ace Hardware across the street, and I want to thank them for some of their support. So I went across the street to get some hardware to fix the fence and a can of spray paint, and I bought an American flag, and I was able to repair the, the rope. Uh, the rope has been out in the environment for 30 or 40 years, but it appeared to be strong enough for me to raise the American flag, as you can see in the video. Well, as soon as I raised that American flag, the, the rope snapped. And normally the American flag should fly away or come crashing down. And this was maybe 20 or 30 feet high. We didn't have any sort of ladder. And even if we did, we'd have no way to really climb up there. And I am not kidding. As I was looking up at it, the rope, and I have a photo of it, which I can share later, the rope wrapped itself around the flagpole and formed a little knot in the wind. 
and then American flag, old glory was flying firmly there. My friend Steve and I couldn't figure it out. I think it was perhaps the spirit of those soldiers that gave their lives for our country. But 20 feet high on this flagpole, the cord attached itself and formed a knot so that the flag would not fall. I went back by there 24 hours later and it was still flying strong and the knot was still there. I can't explain it. I have a photo of it, which I can show on my phone if you want, but somehow the rope tied itself and formed a knot and the old glory American flag is flying up there to this morning. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, I, that sounds to me like a miracle. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, there you go. Just hold that right up there and take a look. Okay. I, I see it. Send me, email me that picture if you would, and we'll get it on TV so everybody can see it. We'll get it on our website. Uh, great story. I want to stay involved. Let's keep in touch. Anything I can do uh, to help out with this whole issue, let me know. Kudos to the guys across the street at the Ace Hardware. I imagine this is going to pique some curiosity. The site is Walnut Lake Road on the south side of Walnut Lake Road, and it is just, let me get this right, it is just uh, west of Inkster Road right there. you got the grocery store up the hill. Boom, there's the, the hill. property right there if you're heading toward Civic Center TV in, the, in, the, in our community center. So great thing, great deal. Thank you very much. Bert, thank you for being available at last minute. I'm really glad you put all this on Facebook and it's all there. And now we've got the story on video. Good to be with you. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you, Dave. It's an honor to be on. And if anyone wants more information, we'll update uh, after we meet with the Chaldean Cultural Society, uh, hopefully moving forward. And I encourage those people that are out and about today or this week to drive by the site, uh, take a look at the memorial, maybe snap a photo of it and post it as well. Uh, and we can spread the word about uh, honoring those that serve our great country. Burke Green, thank you very much. Give our regards to Steve as well. Steve K, two West Bloomfield citizens doing an amazing thing. And what, what a remarkable story for us here on this Flash Live. We will stay very much involved. Do we need a break or can we just go? We're just going. Okay. Joining us now from the greater West Bloomfield Chamber of Commerce, Suzanne Levine. Suzanne, you're going to have a hard time following up to that story because, you know, a memorial resurrected by two local guys who just thought it was the right thing to do. The flag line breaks and a knot is somehow tied to keep the flag flying right here in West Bloomfield. What? Oh, my goodness. That, that. That, that warms my heart. But we have to get on with the, with our big news of the day, and that is your event tomorrow coming up at the West Bloomfield Township Hall. And that, of course, is a great West Bloomfield Health and Wellness Fair. You all ready? Absolutely. As you can see, I've already taken my act on the road today. I'm not in my usual <laughs> location. Um, yes, I'm really excited, and uh, the 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 response from the community has been overwhelming. Um, I really probably could use a bigger facility, but we're so grateful to the West, Town West Bloomfield Township, uh, Steve Kaplan, Chris Darcy, Debbie Binder, Terry Weingarten, everyone over there, uh, Simon and the other people that help us set up. So we're really excited. And we have um, a massage chair therapist. We have drip IV with some B12. So if you need that extra shot of energy, which you may need tomorrow, since uh, I'm sure you're going to Need to do the show. Absolutely. Uh, so we have a lot of really great vendors this year, and we're really excited to welcome the public and let them know that it's free and they can learn all about all the great different health benefits and options available to them. Well, we really look forward to it. Thank you very much for allowing us to broadcast live and get, help us get all that set up at the last minute, the way we usually run around here at Civic Center TV. But we'll be there. We'll be broadcasting live from noon to 1 o'clock, maybe a little bit longer. We'll see how things go. And we invite people to tune in. But what, what you really want to do is get in your car and come on over starting at 11 o'clock because there's going to be a lot of really helpful information. And look, we're, we're all getting older, right? And it's okay that... You need a little bit of help from the experts to keep everything in tune and keep yourself looking good and feeling good. And it's so important. It's so important. Yes, absolutely. Um, Billy Crystal said it best. It's better to look good than to feel good. And you look marvelous. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're really looking forward. 14 years, um, this has been, you know, this is, this is an event that people like, look forward to. And, uh, and it's very hands-on, as you mentioned. You've got the massage uh, therapist there. You've got, you're going to have a lot of people with a lot of information. And it'll be busy, but it's not going to be so busy that you can't 
take an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one discussion with somebody who just might be on the other side of saving your life. You know, you, you don't know it. And uh, let's be honest, a lot of people are intimidated into going into the doctor's office because they, you know, for a million different reasons. So this is a good opportunity to have a discussion with some healthcare professionals in maybe a little bit more relaxed environment for you. Absolutely, and we even have some mental health professionals there because we know that one of the true pandemics is, you know, the mental health issues right now. So people need to not be ashamed to go seek help wherever they can get it. And so we're very excited because, as I say, this year we have a lot of different options and we even have blood pressure and some other different medical things that we're going to be offering our community. So come on down. We're so excited to see you. Maybe you'll get a chance to be uh, interviewed on um, Civic Center TV. Absolutely. So grateful to you. And this is also a wonderful networking event because if even if people don't have a table, they can come with their business cards and get to meet other businesses that perhaps they can refer to or be referred to. All right, Suzanne, I appreciate it. Thank you for popping in. We'll see you tomorrow. It's going on at the West Bloomfield Township Hall at 11 o'clock until the early afternoon. We're broadcasting at noon, and we really look forward to seeing everyone come by and enjoy each other's company tomorrow. Anything else, Suzanne? No, just thanks again to everyone that helps me put this together, and especially to Civic Center TV and your fabulous staff. So we're appreciated. We're most appreciative. All right, thank you, Suzanne. Appreciate you joining us. Couple of quick stories here before we run along today. I uh, want to say congratulations <laughs> to Robert Nassau, who is sworn in in the Plymouth Township Police Department. Why do we care? Well, we care about all officers. But Robert is a 2007 graduate of West Bloomfield High School, a 2022 graduate of Sacred Heart Major Seminary, and uh, got his Bachelor's of Philosophy there. He is now in the Police Department over in Plymouth Township and we wish him the very best of luck. If you are a homeowner, this might be of interest to you. Soaring Eagle Realty in West Bloomfield posted this morning information on Facebook talking about how the real estate industry is doing it. As you can see, houses on the market, 29 days. That's the typical time it's taken for a house in West Bloomfield to be sold. Average sales price, $452,000. $443, 1,254 new listings, and 852 sold listings. Now, those numbers are down just a little bit from last month, but all in all, a very solid month for real estate here in West Bloomfield. We're getting into the summer buying and selling season. If you're gonna sell your home, would be a good time to get it listed. Kegel Harbor, if we're gonna be there later on tonight, I'll be there and get a chance to talk to the folks in Kegel, but you wanna be there on Friday at 5.30 to kick off the 2023 Kegel Block Party Series at Rose Sorta Park right behind City Hall. You can bring your own lawn chair and blanket and enjoy live music that we'll have there by Taylor Tucky. Grab have a snack or a dinner at the Fry Guy food truck and a whole lot more fun. So come on by. Don't forget about the Kegel Harbor block parties happen right behind City Hall. They're going on all summer long the third Friday in June, July, and August. And we kick it off this Friday as we are now in the heart of summer. And hey, that's it for today. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Splash Live. Awful good to be with you. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. And again, I want to invite you to join me in person tomorrow at 12 noon at the West Bloomfield Township Hall. We will be there with Suzanne for the big health event and look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much to Jared for doing a great job on the show. We'll see you tomorrow morning on The Splash Live.